tuna fish can rodent coil, uh, more experiment, experiments. Um, to, in order to get to, to the bottom of um, this interesting phenomenon, phenomena of the um, if the load increasing, reducing the current on the main supply, um, instead of a motor, uh, this little motor here, I'm going to use a variable resistor as the load. Um, and so this is this is on the secondary of the rodent coil bridge rectifier, 500 microfarad capacitor, and the variable resistor is wired across this capacitor. Uh, so this will be showing the um, output current, and this will be showing the supply current. Um, so I'm going to clip this on here now. Um, the first thing I kind of wanted to show you uh, is um, if I dial this resistance basically to infinity, or, or actually better yet, I'll just unclip the uh, coil completely so that the secondary is not connected. There's no current flow. Um, the supply voltage is really low because I'm pulsing um, at a very slow frequency. And we see that phenomenon where um, there's ringing between the pulses, uh, like I talked about in my previous videos. So this is almost like an antenna at this point, receiving energy. And if I put my hand over the coil, um, you can actually make uh, this kind of wiggle and things. Um, it was pointed out that the oscilloscope is pretty close. It's only two feet away. And the power supply in here has a huge magnetic field that's uh, possibly received by this. Plus, um, the scope probes are, um, I had them connected on the opposite side. Uh, currently, I have them connected on the side that is pinging the coil, and we see a ring on that side as well uh, that sort of is subject to uh, these fields. Um, but anyway, what I wanted to show was um, if I um, increase the load, Okay, so um, we have like a 3 mil output here, and uh, you can see um, the uh, intensity a little bit too high here. You can see um, the, the ring goes away because um, basically we have a, a lower resistance here as a load. Um, watch what happens when I I'm gonna crank this up. So we can just see this, the edge of this pulse here. Watch what happens as I increase the load. I mean, I make the load go back towards infinity in terms of resistance. I'll watch this waveform here. The 500 uh, microfarad capacitor is charging up. You can actually see uh, the ringing slowly coming back as the capacitor charges and then boom. Let me do that again. Set the load back to uh, a 300, uh, 3 milliamp current draw. So the this resistor is turned all the way so that its resistance is like 0.1 ohms or something. There's the edge of the waveform. Now I'm going to uh, turn the resistance back down, capacitor charging up. And as soon as there's no longer a current, so current draw, then we get into that oscillation situation because um, the, the, res the resistance is sort of infinity at this point. Now, as I um, increase the frequency, we can um, 
see a more uh, dramatic dampened oscillation. And if I increase the load, so I will turn the variable resistor. It can cut it right down. So there, there's a sort of a, a balance that you could strike. You'll, you notice as I, as I turn the resistance, as I move the resistance around, there's sort of a, a balance that you can strike in terms of a load where you could exploit this ringing. And uh, you can exploit it sub as a function of the frequency. So here's here's me manipulating the frequency now. If I go uh, a little bit too far to the right, I, I can't benefit from the ringing. Uh, bring in the frequency a little bit. You can exploit the ringing. So now we we have that phenomena where my hand, when it's getting near the circuit board, it's, it's causing an inductive ringing. Um, now I want to show what happens uh, on these two meters. This is the load current. This is the power supply current. As I move my hand close to the circuit board, the ringing actually will cause a current drain from the main supply. And this current doesn't seem to change. Changes a little bit. I happen to have some iron filings. Um, that were in this jar. I put them in this jar here. But I don't see anything happening to them because I think they're too massive and my field is not strong enough. If I put a magnet here, if I put them over a magnet, you can definitely see something occurring to the filings. These are neodins, so they are very strong. I tried to make a, uh, a liquid here with iron shavings in them. Uh, but it, again, there's really no effect. So I think you need a lot larger gauge wire and a lot larger current. So I uh, challenge challenge people to try to do that so we can visualize this uh, vortex. <laughs>